The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. The title of Grandmaster, highly coveted and sought after since the beginning of the game. Welcome to the third St. Louis Norm Congress. Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2022 St. Louis Norm Congress. It's an, it's an exciting day here today at the Congress. My name, of course, is Caleb Denby and we are going to be going over uh, some of the games today. A lot of games still in action. A lot has also already been determined. So exciting stuff. Uh, first, let's talk about what a Norm Congress is. You know, what, what, is, what is a Norm? Why is everybody here? Uh, so, of course, a norm is a uh, requirement to get chess titles. So right now, in this tournament, we have players competing for the International Master and Grand Master norms to get those titles. So, in general, a player must score quantifiably well in a tournament where at least three other players already hold the title being sought. So, GM norm section, we've got three GMs. IM norm section, we've got three IMs. The average rating of all the players must be above a minimum threshold, and at least four national federations must be represented, uh, or even more if the fields are larger. Beyond that, of course, you also have to do well in the tournament, so they have to uh, get to a certain performance rating in order to achieve a norm. Um, as of this morning, let's check out where the fields stood as far as standings. In the Grandmaster section, after seven rounds, Vlad Belus was in the lead by a full point, and we will see that uh, perhaps he's ahead by even more after today. Of course, Balaji Dagupati was also having a reasonably good event, uh, one in round seven to bring him to five uh, points. Chris Repka also is at 4.5 points. David Brodsky on four. Josiah also on four. And the rest of the field trails not too far behind. Uh, then over in the International Masters section, it is the story of Josh Postuma and Matthias Merrick. Um, they were tied for the lead with five and a half points each. Aaron Grabinski uh, was having a great tournament as well, but unfortunately lost in round seven. Jennifer Yu close behind with four points. Begim and Ezra both on three and a half. And then you see the rest of the field trailing uh, not too far behind. Um, all right, why don't we check out what the schedule is for this event? Of course, we do not have too many more rounds left to go. Uh, tomorrow is the ninth and final round. And then if we do have ties for first place, there will be a playoff going on at 4 p.m. Uh, be sure to join us on both Twitch and YouTube. We're going out live here. And without further ado, why don't we get into uh, what, what's going on today in round eight? Uh, we should have some pretty interesting pairings. And there you do see it. Vladimir Belus defeats Josiah Stearman. And that is actually going to uh, secure first place for him in the Grandmaster section. We also have David Brodsky uh, uh, winning his game against Joshua Rees. We have Chris uh, with the draw against Balaji Dagupati, which is part of what secures Vlad Belus's victory. And then we have two games remaining in progress between Evan Park and Ivan Sh uh, Shikko, uh, <laughs> Skitko and Victor Madvieshin against Kostya Kavutsky. Um, and why don't we take a look at Vlad Belus's game? and see how he won the tournament. Um, so yeah, can I ask you to go check in with, with Ben? Um, okay, so Vlad Belus had the black pieces here up against Josiah Stearman. Went e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4. So we had an open Sicilian, uh, classical open Sicilian, and then the Richter Rouser. Look at this. All right, so bishop d7 to start with, which is one of the normal moves. I guess e6 is slightly more common. So we continue on, and then an early f4 by white. Okay, so this is making for an interesting game. So rook c8, we see a6, and I think we might be transposing to, to some very strange lines. Okay, uh, queen d4, we get e6, queen side castles, black castles king side, and then you're going to get the classic Sicilian uh, types of attacks. So black is going to be uh, challenging white down the c file, white pushing on the king side, both players aiming to checkmate. And looks like white picks up this rook on f8. Okay, really complex tactics here already. 
And then white takes on f3, getting the material back. And then I think I actually peeked on this game after bishop takes d1. And I was quite surprised by this move, f takes e6. But I think this move was, was actually very tricky. Um, if black attempts to save the bishop, I believe, I, I think rook f7 would be the idea. And I'm not so sure that black would have had a good uh, response here. Um, of course, if you capture, queen f2 is going to regain the piece. And if you don't capture, then you're going to have pretty serious issues with things like e7. And why am I talking about this game? Because we have the man himself. Uh, welcome to the show, Vlad. Uh, mm. Congratulations on your Thank tournament. You. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, about, uh, about this game, yeah, f5 was a huge blunder. Well, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, so this move f5. Yeah, and uh, my opponent told me that he didn't prepare Rouser and actually like... Uh, yeah, I was like this all, all this tournament I'm playing. I'm trying to play opening that I never played because every time uh, these guys they're super <laughs> strong. They're they're preparing against me, yeah. and uh, I get very bad positions. But here, like I got lucky. Yeah, uh, f5. Yeah, uh, knight f4, and it looks like uh, it's already over. But uh, yeah, he 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 was defending uh, very well. Yeah. So yeah. some kind of complicated desperado tactics here. Um, yeah, and he, okay, he can take uh, back. Let's say. Uh, Bishop seven, okay, like uh, like let's say ninety four. Yeah, yeah. I just take yeah and uh, and yeah. Now if e seven, you take no, on f three. Uh, so. E seven, maybe on c two. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So it's uh, but yeah, bishop e four, bishop g five, uh, and like uh, I always tell my students, uh, opposite color bishop is uh, is in your favor w when you are attacking, and I'm I'm the one who attacking, yeah. and I have uh, extra pawn here, so I was kind of <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> at least I, I'm I'm not worse here. Yeah, it's certainly so, pleasant. Yeah, and um, uh, so I guess what what he did m might be the most critical then. But. Yes, I think so. So bishop e seven, knight c three, of course, bishop f eight, and also important that uh, checkmate on g seven. I cannot take immediately on, on f three. Right. Yeah, so I have to take with a rook. Okay. And right now, yeah, everything is hanging. Like he cannot take bishop c six because knight e two, and rook on d one is hanging. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, lots of problems to, to try to solve. Yeah, so. but he he uh, I, I I thought that he's gonna resign like uh, very soon, but he was defending very well. Like uh, yeah, so uh, took... I was mentioning he came up with this interesting idea to go rook f one. Yeah, and then after bishop d one take on e six. Maybe bishop so. d one. Uh, maybe e five was easier. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like that's what the the, the computer is saying. So this this f e six idea was this a surprise to you? Uh, not really, but actually this uh, this computer it's not good because uh, yeah. like <laughs> second second round uh, I I calculated brilliant combination actually it worked and then I I checked Liches and uh, they like said that. Uh, it's not very correct, but <laughs> I checked with my engine and it was uh, exactly what I was calculating. But uh, yeah, yeah. Rukufan, well, bishop d1, uh, yeah, I, I saw f takes e6, uh, but uh, yeah, I saw it. Uh, yeah, f takes e6. Yep. Uh, I don't know, first of all, I wanted to play bishop e2, but I forgot uh, you, before I joined you, you mentioned uh, rook yeah, f7. Yes, so I was looking at this line. R rook f7, it... I think it's not very precise. Uh, if you oh, want to okay. trade, you have to take e takes uh, f7. Ah, so I, I thought against ef, you might just have king h8. Uh, uh, queen d6? Queen d6 looks problematic, actually, yeah. Well, ah, so, so maybe you have sure. to give... Uh, yeah. Maybe you have to give a check first? No, well then you just take. Yeah. Okay, so... So, and uh, after rook f7, the problem is uh, I can play queen g5 and I don't know, like, you have to move your king somewhere, right? And yeah. uh, I'm playing uh, right now queen b5, queen uh, b5 yep. check, so my bishop is not hanging anymore, and then I just take on f7. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, so, so EF was, was the problem. Yeah, then. EF, and uh, I forgot, like, I was calculating kind of, and I forgot that after rook f7, rook f7, king f7, uh, queen of two is where <laughs> I just I just missed this check. Yeah, and you know uh, this uh, 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 queen queen sand game kind of tricky. So it, like, of course, you yeah. have to calculate uh, millions of checks. So and uh, again, I'm telling my students be lazy in a good way <laughs> during your game. So yeah, don't, don't calculate you, unless you need to. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So and uh, yeah, I played. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, bishop, so you came up with two. this move, which I mean, it seems good enough, mm -hmm. right? Um, so white does still go for this EF7 idea. Yes. Um, so if king h8, I guess this is still the problem. Yes, exactly. Um, so you, you captured, and then after queen to c4. Yeah, and here I kind of hallucinated again. Like, okay, like I'm, I'm fine. Like I saw everything, but I, like uh, my 
uh, hallucination was the, uh, about that I have I'm having two extra points instead of one. But right. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, like it's simple math. Like I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't. Yeah, um, <laughs> count of course. The points. Uh, every pawn on the board is pretty weak, though, right? Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it should be winning. I think rook and game. But yeah, queen c7. Yeah. I think so, yeah, only uh, one move. Uh, right? Of course, the trick is is queen c8 here. So. Uh, queen back to c7 to defense, yeah, uh, and then no matter which piece you you take, black can just recapture. So yeah. he, he goes for the rook endgame. Yeah, um, I mean it, the best uh, the best uh, option for him. Yeah, I, I guess you, you can't ever get a yeah, queen endgame yeah, from from this position. Like he, you know, queen d5, the the bishop. Oh, no, it's also so. tricky, kind of uh, queen e6, queen e6. Uh, I oh, have okay. I have bishop a4. So. Ah, yeah, <laughs> de defending the yeah, uh, all, so. all the squares. Yeah, so bishop a4 was uh, kind of uh, yeah. So in, in the rook end game though, um, yeah, my, my impression was just that uh, white white can't hold everything, and he's down a pawn as well. So. Uh, I was thinking that uh, okay, like uh, I I think I missed something, but uh, like somewhere, but uh, from human perspective, it's uh, impo impossible, but uh, very difficult to hold. Uh, yeah. So I have I have many plans. Uh, it's not uh, yeah. Yeah. So many you, setups. You just secured the d pawn first and. Then after you bring the king in, um, so I guess this is a question. I actually didn't see the end of the game live. Um, king well, seven. Why not king e seven? Rook b one. Rook b one. Yes. Okay. I see. So this was the point of this a yes. forty five. So you have to give one of the pawns, mm -hmm. um, and then rook g three, and yeah. So of course it's it's hopeless if black gets the the, the duo. So oh, well, uh, I mean, you, it has to be calculated. But yeah, I, yeah, I was so calculating like a little rook bit. Rook b six, for example. Yeah, just. Uh, uh, my mine is faster. Mine are faster. Yeah. Or oh, maybe even here. Uh, do I have like rook g five? Maybe, or I don't know. Yeah. Uh, looks like rook g five. It. I know. I, I would. Pawn, I would recalculate. Maybe h five is stronger. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would. I would double check. Um, so rook h three, rook d six, and then so white does come back to defend the g pawn. Mm -hmm. um, and now you bring the king. Rook b four, um, and king d six. Wow. So apparently the the engine. Uh, at least on you know low depths, yeah, yeah. thinks I, this is I, worth I taking. Was, I was calculating this line: uh, yeah. rook b7, rook g4, rook b6, king c5, rook a6. Uh, I, I think it was the best shot for him, and, uh, like uh, h5. Yeah. Okay. So h5, and okay, I was calculating. Uh, this, I guess you this go. Line. You go rook, this way. Rook a8. Yes, uh, that's correct. And I, I, I'm going h4. Right. And then after. A6, I guess you just come King, King B6. King yes. B6. King B6. So I'm not sure if there's a, a way to, to try something else with white. Yeah, uh, my, my idea is simple. I'm, I'm playing G5 and I, I'm playing H3. And rook H8, rook H4. I mean, H, um, uh, like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, okay, so, so rook C, H8, he C4, can, for yeah. example, H3 but and then you, up here. Yeah, yeah. Here. Uh, that's, and, that's correct. But you always have to check like such moves, some, some nasty moves like C5 here. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, 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 like this. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, and here, I guess, maybe is, is good enough, but then there's a check. No, and, then and, and, and then a7. Uh, just a7 here? Yeah. Okay. a7, um, and right now and you, then, you're yeah, not on time. So well, maybe you're, you're, you're on time because rook g3, right? Here, we can, ah, we have, rook g3. We have rook g3. But okay, yeah, I, can, I think maybe this move, though, is, oh, okay. is a problem. You can, oh, okay, and uh, a7, then just a7. No, or or just a yeah, and I'm losing. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> tough. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I get like as I said, like c5, like some nasty checks. Like uh, you always have to be, like, you yeah. have, always have to be careful. But I was, uh, I, I felt okay. Yeah, may, maybe here can you just uh, play a bit more simply? Just come come back with the rook and skip behind the pawns. Mm. Probably, but again, it's uh, it's very tricky. I I calculated yeah, until I until H four, and I was like, okay, at least yeah. I'm not losing. And again, like I will calculate it uh, later. But uh, right. Um, okay, so so <coughs> maybe maybe this was a try for White. He just goes King B three instead, and now I guess you. Uh... Yeah. So uh, basically, my general idea to uh, create uh, pass pawn, and right. uh, pass pawn, but not immediately because I like in perfect. Case in perfect world, I would uh, I would like to have uh, my rook behind the pawn, so that that was my goal. But it's actually it's very difficult. So I like in, in the game I kind of retreat my uh, my pieces and actually I went uh, to g4 with my uh, I, I captured g4 with my king and uh, interesting. Yeah. So I, I guess now this was just going to be a worse version yes, of what he yes, could have gotten. Correct. So he he goes rook e4 to you know sort of be consistent. And then h6. Okay, computer doesn't like any of my. <laughs> it, well, um, I, I maybe it, 
It, it says root g1. I, I'm not sure I understand, to be honest. I haven't looked at this enough. But, yeah, okay, so root f4, <laughs> root g1. We are, um, we are on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Then you get checked, comes back. And okay, so you swing the rook over, and now king, uh, king d5. And right, right so now I'm combining ideas. This move sort of surprises me. Why, well, would, uh, why would king a4 be played over king c4? King c4, I, uh, maybe I can play rook b5. Okay, just, just concretely. Rook b5, I see. and rook f7, rook a5, rook g7, rook g5. So, okay, with two, ah, with two yeah. pawns I have more chances, right? Yeah, and this, <laughs> this falls with check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, makes sense to me. So he has to defend the pawn, but but now with the king sidelined, yes, it, you, also you, like, you have to feel that. Like these uh, small factors, like I'm just uh, improving my position or making his position worse. So yeah. he, right now he has a very bad king. Um, so yeah, now, now king d5, and, and it makes sense from this point. Like uh, White has to be in lots of trouble if the king yes. is here. And you can never really do this, because I guess you just take, mm -hmm. and the, the end game is always winning. So. <clears throat> By the way, do, do you know uh, how, how, many, uh, how much king wars? How, how much the king is worth? Yeah. I, I've always heard a little more than four. Uh, oh, okay, you're, you're very close. Like, I had uh, this uh, class in the university, math and chess. Yeah. So actually it was calculated and it was about four, yeah. Just about so, four? So it's not yeah. priceless, it's, it yeah, has, it's, it's, it's pretty has good. its own price. It's pretty right? good though, yeah. uh, better than a bishop. Yeah. Um, so yeah, n now I guess you just pick up the g-pawn and yeah. it's, uh, yeah, the, the, the rook is, like is he, not he's, not, he's not on time to, to, yeah. to create counterplay. Yeah. yeah, so he goes for c5, c6, uh, just to, to break things up and, and try to take this pawn, but you yeah. can't even capture here now, so G2, this, yeah. this must, be, must be over. And yeah. that, was, that was enough. Um, so I guess the story of this, this game then was this kind of complex end game, but you, you seize the, the advantage with, uh, after this f5. Yeah, idea. of course. So, yeah. um, in general, what, what should white be, be doing here? I guess f5 is the idea, but you just need to prepare this somehow? Uh, yeah, um, f5 one of the ideas. Uh, maybe maybe just king b1. Like, yeah, just a solid improving move. And then... I also didn't like g4, like before, uh, yeah, something like, I don't know, like uh, he had uh, here, like, uh, let's say, bishop f6, queen, uh, bishop f6, bishop takes f6, king, uh, queen d6. Maybe this, this line is uh, more or less. I, I would be very nervous about uh, leaving my knight here for too long. Uh, like the point is uh, queen d6, let's yep. say. Or d6. No, no, queen d6 is actually bishop c3, it's better version. Bishop c3. Uh, b first? Yeah, okay. because uh, right now I'm keeping queens. Uh, oh, yeah, so, and maybe. Yeah, so and also you couldn't, uh, you couldn't take on d8 first. Uh, because I have right. bishop b2, Check. right? Yeah. Okay. So and uh, it's more or less so equal. Take queen, queen a5, a5 yeah. yes. And I calculated queen, king b2, no queen b4. Oh yeah, uh, queen, queen a2. a2 is saying it. Queen b2, king b2, bishop b4 doesn't work. At least uh, I was. Uh, uh, oh, bishop b4, yeah. Uh, I was thinking that uh, it, it doesn't work, and I was right. going to play just queen b6, and it's a tricky move because after queen b4, okay, king k1 probably the best, but yeah. queen b4, uh, okay. in, uh, queen b4, queen e3. And uh, like it's like very problematic to defend yeah. defend this pawn on f4 actually. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the threats kind of mount. Yeah, it's, g3 uh, is no good. All together, this yeah. discovery doesn't go anywhere. But yeah. may, I mean, maybe like f5. I or just take but... and take on f3. Okay. Yeah. So. Um. So yeah, pre pretty complicated game. So you mentioned um, playing a lot of openings that are a little bit outside of your your normal repertoire, maybe comfort zone. Yeah. So. Uh, is that kind of unique to these round robin norm tournaments, you think? Or uh, have you sort of found this happening in, in all the tournaments you're playing now? Uh, actually, it was re recently I played in uh, Charlotte uh, and yeah. also a round robin tournament. And for like one guy, like we were pl playing Blitz, and uh, one of the uh, player told me that, uh, explain me why I have, uh, I'm playing much worse in round robin tournaments because people are actually preparing against me <laughs> and I, I, I'm not, uh, <clears throat> I'm not spending enough time actually uh, to, to prepare and I was like, oh, he's right. So <laughs> I, I started just play, like, you know, like uh, better uh, to play that you don't know and your opponent don't, uh, doesn't know. Like, so yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, just it's just better version that uh, you don't know and your opponent uh, actually prepared. So. Yeah, yeah it, you, you're getting chess games, and uh, so far it looks like that's been enough to, to secure uh, the win this tournament. Yeah. So, any plans for the, the last round tomorrow? Uh, 
Actually, one uh, that, that's why I came today. Uh, my my former coach told me that uh, never give uh, interviews until tournament is over. Ah, okay. Because you're gonna give interview, you're gonna lose the next day for sure. <laughs> yeah. so, but okay, I came here because I already secured first yeah. place. Yeah, well, so, won the so, tournament. So, right, so the well, my the prediction it's not gonna be an easy game. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us, Vladimir. Uh, okay. Congratulations on on winning the events. Uh, pretty outstanding chess. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, th th this game. Uh, was quite fun and I enjoyed I think it was against uh, Evan Park I, that, yeah, that game yeah, was that, lots of fun yeah, that, that, is, that is my that's my f actually favorite game of yeah this I, tournament. I think that's my favorite game of, yeah. of either event I had a lot of fun looking at that one yeah. all right so congratulations thanks for Thank joining so us much. and uh, with Vladimir leaving us I think we're gonna take a look at the pairings for the I am section um, so we have Josh Postuma up against Gabriella and Tova on board one uh, then Begim is taking on Ezra Chambers. We've got Alice up against Pedro. Uh, one game has already ended. That is the game between Jennifer Yu and Julian Perleko. And we round out the section with Matias Merrick against Aaron Grabinski. So while there's not too much left to play for in the GM section, there's no, no more norm candidates there, uh, and the tournament has been determined, there is quite a bit to play for in the International Master section. So our key matchup here is going to be this one between Matias Merrick and Aaron Grabinski. <laughs> Aaron uh, giving us some eye contact with the camera there. That was fun. Um, so Matias, of course, has five and a half. Uh, Aaron trails him by just a half point with five uh, out of seven. And so this game is going to be key to determining the winner. Um, the other key matchup, if I might say so myself, is going to be this one between Josh Postuma and Gabriella and Tova. And the reason for that, if my sheet here is correct, is Josh needs only one more point to secure not only an IM norm, but the IM title. This would be his third and final norm, and with it, he would go home with, with the new title, and that is the whole point of the tournament. Uh, let's check in on that key matchup first and foremost, though. We've got Matias with the white pieces here up against Aaron Grabinski with the black pieces. Um, and it looks like... Uh, a pretty complex endgame here, if uh, my instincts are correct. So black has um, these queenside pawns, which is going to be a more useful majority in most cases than this three versus two on the king side. Kind of tough to make a passed pawn with this structure for, for white. Now, uh, what does white have in exchange for that? Well, white has the bishop versus the knight, and I think this is going to be a very useful bishop in this position. And on top of that, due to the fractured uh, pawns around black's king, uh, black might have to uh, deal with some, some king safety issues. Um, so that's sort of the general feel, but jumping into specifics here, it looks like Aaron is actually putting on the pressure uh, against white's king um, pretty immediately. And I'm not so sure that's, uh, <laughs> that, that white is generating enough threats uh, against black's king here. So let's talk about moves. So black is maybe immediately threatening this idea of knight g4 check. Um, and now if you move the king away, we come in with the queen. And if you go king f3, then this, this h pawn is hanging. So that is the challenge for white to solve. What are you doing about knight g4? And I don't have the answers, to be honest. You can't really go h3. I think uh, black can and will uh, capture that pawn. You don't even have any invasion squares. And yeah, what's the story? What's the story? Let me cheat. Um, okay, the story is queen to d5. Every other move, black is better. That makes sense to me. So why is queen d5 good enough, I wonder? It says knight g4, king f3, we just take on h2. And yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares about being down a pawn. That's how strong bishops are. So from a human perspective, tough, to, uh, tough pill to swallow playing queen d5 here, right? You have the bishop. Your heart is telling you that the black king should be a bit weaker with these fractured pawns and, you know, your bishop ready to line up on this long diagonal against the king. But, uh, yeah, the engine says this is the only way to not be substantially worse. And it says after king e2, I guess this pawn is taboo because your knight gets a little bit sidelined. And, okay, wow, the, the computer says this is very, very bad. Yep, you, you actually can't stop this pawn. So that's the resource that white is relying on here. And now if we come back with, uh, okay, well, we can't play knight g4. We give this check and come out with the knights. Then draw is found by the almighty engine. Okay, 
so it looks like the engine just very concretely is finding uh, a way to uh, end the game in a perpetual here. I have to say, though, not at all a natural line, not at all an intuitive line, uh, if you ask me. This queen d5 move would be a, a very, very nice find if Matias is able to find it. However, he only has 90 seconds on the clock. Uh, I'm not so sure that this game is, is going to be going uh, Matias's way. So if Aaron does put on some pressure here and manages to win this game, he would leapfrog Matias and potentially end up in first place, depending on the outcome of Josh's game. So there we see a move. He plays this move king f3. Yeah, so this was, was not what uh, the almighty engine was, was saying was the way to go. Um, that being said, it looks like you know it's sort of dealing with this threat. Now if we go knight g4, uh, I suppose the idea might be just to play this move h3. Just uh, kick this knight out. But now I'm sort of confused again on what's going on here. This actually looks like checkmate. Okay. Probably this is not the plan. <laughs> um, maybe, 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 maybe this is the idea. And the players want to reach a friendly, friendly result like this. Um, so how does black actually prove an advantage here? We can give a queen g4 check, but I don't think it does a lot. Maybe just knight f5. Maybe this, this secondary idea, bringing this knight to this other active square. I, I'm not sure where exactly you want to place this queen. It, it looks like it could get sort of awkward. And then I, I am actually going to play this move h5 with uh, the black pieces here. And, you know, somehow it seems like some pressure. There's, there's queen c6 ideas. There's, there's a lot of moves that you have to keep track of here uh, with white. There's, you know, queen g4 in some positions. Uh, have to be careful. Engine says 0, 0.00. So there you go. Um, so with that, why don't we take a quick look at the prize fund for the events, uh, see what we've got going on there. Uh, we have $9,000 at stake in the Grandmaster section. Of course, Vladimir has already secured that first place prize of $2,000, but plenty left to play for with those second, third, fourth, and fifth place prizes all being a bump above the, uh, I guess, kind of appearance fee. Uh, you get 600 bucks just for showing up and playing all the games. Not too bad. Uh, and then over in the International Master section, we have $6,000 at stake, $1,200 for first place, $1,000 for second, 700 bucks for third. Also, not too bad for five days of chess. Uh, and I'm receiving word that Alice Lee has potentially uh, blundered in her game against Pedro Rodriguez. So let's see what's going on here before I do any cheating. How did we get here? So Alice had the white pieces here and a rather uncomfortable position, right? So you, you see this isolated D pawn. You think that uh, maybe uh, white is going to be better because you can pressure this. But then you look at the other uh, pawns on the board and you look at the minor pieces, right? This bishop is ideally placed on G7. It's an unopposed bishop. It's going to give black some pretty monstrous activity. Uh, and white has done a bunch of nonsense on the king's side. Those weaknesses are, are going to be there for the rest of the game. So Alice tried king f2, trying to hold everything together. And then, yeah, this nice move bishop c8 by, by Pedro. He's just rerouting this bishop to more active diagonals. Uh, he has enough activity that he's not really so concerned about defending this pawn. Uh, f4 is the choice by Alice, so sort of trying to get her own bishop into the game. We see queen b6 now, uh, bishop f3, bishop f5. Queen c3, rook c8, and, and yeah, all of the black pieces now have sort of sprung to life around this isolated pawn. Um, looks pretty good. Bishop e4 strikes me as kind of strange, but maybe there was just no alternative. You know, of course, this was now a threat with the pin being broken. So bishop e4, we get captures, captures, knight down to e2, queen e6. So black's still just searching for a way to invade here. We saw a check, rook back to d1, and now rook c2. So, okay, this move rook d1 is sort of surprising to me. You know, I would be worried about this move rook to c2. You know, I, I would want to stop this rook from invading, stop ideas like queen c4 uh, piling up against this knight. So my first instinct would have definitely been rook d2 here, trying to keep this, this guy out, and then finding some way to reorganize my pieces, right? Maybe, maybe that, that way doesn't exist, actually. Kind of sad. But she goes rook d1 instead, allows rook c2, and now rook c1 was her idea. So she's trying to evict this rook from the c file. Uh, but of course, Pedro is just going to leave it there. Just plays rook b2. And now rook over to f1. And I'm being told that one of these moves was a blunder. Um, 
unclear to me which one of these moves was the actual blunder. To me, it looks like Black's position is is still just kind of building up. I, I don't see a knockout punch here by any, by any stretch of the word, uh, but ideas like queen to c4 are gonna look really, really nasty. Okay, rook to b3 is what Pedro goes with. I'm kind of curious about this move, queen to c4, right? This looks like it attacks the knight a lot of times. I guess rook f2 has to be the intention. And then maybe, then maybe I play this move. I just want to bring this, this rook to this slightly awkward square. And then after this, the queen has to leave. I can take stuff. This is coming. Looks good for Pedro regardless. Uh, even in the game, we're, we're getting something similar, just with this rook on f1 instead of f2. So it looks good for Pedro. He might just pick up this pawn on a3. Uh, perhaps there are some ideas of b5 in the air as well. But I'm also receiving word in our other key game in the IM section that uh, Josh Pushtuma might be doing suddenly very, very well. So we, of course, had this complex position where Josh had this knight on e5 against the bishop's pair. Uh, and the queenside majority against the kingside majority. We saw this slightly strange looking knight to d7, somehow trapping this bishop in the middle of the board. Uh, nowhere to go to save this piece. So Josh was looking perhaps to get one of the bishops off the board. Always a good idea to remove one of the bishops when the, the strong bishop pair is glaring down on your position. And he chooses actually to keep the knight, interestingly. I think this is Josh sort of playing for a win here, right? You, you could go takes on c5, play something like queen c3, bring this bishop back, and play this opposite colored bishop endgame. Um, but instead, he chooses to go for bishop e3, leaving the knight on the board, uh, where it's already nicely placed to, to challenge this pawn on b6. And maybe he felt that this was giving him some winning chances. So bishop c6 played in the game. Uh, Josh does actually pick up that extra pawn now. And now interesting move, knight to c8. So of course my first instinct would have been this, but I think queen to g5 is putting on some nasty pressure, also defending against any invasions. So instead Josh comes up with this weird looking move, knight c8, knight to the back row. Uh, black picks the pawn back up, but now what's this? Queen d8, knight e7, and that's a checkmate threat. So black plays bishop e8, losing a piece. Was there no other answer? I guess there was no other answer, right? Maybe she thought h5 or something, but check, 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 and if not checkmate, very, very close. And actually, I think this is uh, the disgusting move to, to end the game. <laughs> g3, checkmate, unstoppable. Or queen g3, unstoppable, if you decide to pin me. Sad, sad story. So h5, no good. So she comes up with bishop e8, gives this check, gives this check, gives this check. And I think she's just hoping for some kind of perpetual here. The point of bishop e8 was to draw the queen off of the d file to the worst square of e8, and then hope that she can trap this, this king in a perpetual check. Now, is it true? Is it going to be perpetual? I remain unconvinced. I think queen d6, and you actually have already run out of checks with the move king h4. Coming up the board towards the enemy king, towards the opposition, but uh, somehow remaining safe. If g5. King h5, even further up the board, and now you actually are just out of checks. Uh, now, can Gabriella still try to survive with some king g7? Check. Maybe. Maybe the answer is, is maybe. Uh, I guess you have to go for something like this, you know, like knight c8. Uh, I can start making threats, and maybe it's not so clear. Maybe it's not so clear. Uh, so king g7, probably we need something better with, uh, with the white pieces here. Now, what is that? Uh, what is that better option? Unclear to me. Now, this knight's just sort of, sort of trapped over here. If you try to secure your knight, again, queen g3 is going to come. Looks scary. So maybe, maybe Josh is not super happy with this idea of, of king h5. I think maybe king g4 is somehow more accurate. And now if we, we try the exact same thing, my king is a little bit less checkmated. Um, I don't think you're so happy about this one because now I do have uh, a lot more options with my pieces. For example, I can even do this and some very strange looking knight to g8. Queen g3 though again. Yeah, it, it just takes some calculations. Okay, so this one, this one would be winning. Um, so. King h4 is on the board. We'll see if, if Gabriella does play this move g5. I think this has to be 
what you try. I don't know what else you can go for. Um, and then it'll be interesting to see where Josh decides to put the king. Because king h5, king g7, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's an answer here, but I, I just don't see it yet. <laughs> I, I just don't see it, which is always concerning, you know, because when, when you're playing over the board, uh, somehow it's, it's not so easy. The line I showed with king on h5 and king on g7 was just mate. Um, I'm interested to see where, where the mate is. Queen g8, king, king f6, and knight c8, queen g3, and where, where's the checkmate? You can check me around a little bit, but I can come back, check me from this direction, I'll come up, and that is uh, not checkmate, right? And no other checks, and then you have a problem. How's Julian doing today? Uh, not so good. He lost his game against Jennifer Yu before we went live here. Um, okay, wow. So Josh does just go king h5. So g5 check king h5 on the board. Now it must be king g7. There's, there's simply no other move here. Every other move is, is checkmate. So king g7, I imagine. Oh, queen d1 check. Queen d1 check. But just g4. But just g4. And that is the end of the game. Jennifer Yu has resigned. So she didn't think king g7 was worth trying. Clearly, I'm, I'm missing something. King g7, check here, knight c8. Queen g3. Oh, I'm sorry. Gabriella and Tova. Not, not Jennifer Yu. Oh, this is mate in three. How is this mate? Oh, 97. <laughs> I missed 97. And then checkmate. So there you go. Uh, as always, not so good at, at calculating on the fly. Um, so she went queen d1, now g4. And that's, that's going to be the end of the game. Uh, so with that, I believe that brings Josh to six and a half points, which if my paper here is correct, that is the IM title. So congratulations, Josh Postuma becomes an IM in St. Louis, the story of the IM section. And on top of that, uh, secures at least a tie for first going into the final round. So of course, you know, he's not guaranteed tied first place, but going into the final round, he will at least be tied for first. Meanwhile, what's going on in our key matchup? Maybe we'll get Josh down here for an interview. But yeah. King f3, uh, white did, or black did go for this queen h3 idea. And then bishop b2. So again, this looks tempting, right? It seems like the black king should be the one that's weak here. But after queen f1 check, Aaron, it looks like, has found a very, very dangerous line. Checks the white king up the board. Goes queen c6. Queen takes c4. That's an extra pawn. And to my eyes, that looks like a win for Aaron Grabinski. So our tournament leader might be falling to uh, Aaron Grabinski, one of the highest rated players in the section. I think he trails uh, the new newly crowned IM Josh Postuma uh, by just a few rating points. Uh, but so far, having a very good tournament. Um, yeah, and I, I, I sort of got the feeling that this would happen. The, the, the engine giving this queen d5 move just felt so, so strange. You know, queen, queen d5 is weird. You want this queen sort of pressuring this, this black king. Queen d5 is a hard move to play. Um, and then after queen h3, uh, supposedly queen d3, again, was the way to go. Just not at all caring about uh, this guy because, you know, this is checkmate. Okay, this is, yeah, this, this wouldn't happen. <laughs> um, so because you can't come up the board and knight f7 runs into queen g4, uh, you have to go back. And that apparently is the draw for white. So just queen d3, guarding against all the checks, making queen h5 the only reasonable check, and then sort of playing for the draw here. Um, honestly, though, from a human perspective, tough to, to play for the draw with, with white here, right? You, you've got this nice bishop. You look like it looks like you're pressuring the black king. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, you, you're fighting for your life. Not, a, not an easy switch to make, especially psychologically. And yeah, Aaron, of course, playing the knight to the corner. Uh, you love to see it. So. We'll see if Aaron can secure victory here. We just now see this move, bishop e5. That is capturable, I believe. I don't think there's any miracle draws here. Maybe f5 is, is what he's intending, trying to cut the king off and, and come after him. But at the worst case, you know, knights are very, very good defenders of the king. You can even go with, with knight g8 and, and king h8. And look at that. No more checks. Look at that beautiful construction of the pieces. So I do believe Aaron will be securing the victory here. I don't know if he'll, he'll go for the capture of this bishop, but uh, looks like he'll be doing uh, very, very well. 
And I'm not sure what the, the last round matchup is, is going to be in the IM section. I, I don't recall a game between Josh and Aaron. Uh, that's right, that's the final game. And here we have Josh joining us in the studio, and it will be a final matchup between Josh and Aaron uh, for all the marbles, uh, yes. assuming this game goes the way it looks to be going. So, first of all, Josh, congratulations! That's the Thank IM you. title, right? Yes, Six and a half is. points? It you is. did it. Thank uh, you. So, yeah. what does it mean to do it here in St. Louis on your first visit, I think, to... My first visit? Uh, I'm, I'm so happy. I, <laughs> I'm so happy. I've been working for this title for, like, four years since hitting FM. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, not an easy hundred points to climb, not an easy three norms to get at all. Definitely But not. Um, I have really enjoyed playing here in St. Louis. It's just, you know, absolutely amazing, so... Yeah. Well, you know. huge congratulations, yeah. and uh, your job's not over yet. You still have to win the tournament. <laughs> Correct. That is <laughs> that would I mean, be good. Yeah. You don't want to be the guy that gets the norm and then loses and then the last loses, round. Doesn't yeah. win the tournament. Right. So, right, right. Clearly, right. you have to. So, of course. Uh, walk me through this last game that you just played here. It looked sure. like a very interesting finish. So we started off, uh, mm -hmm. of course, in the Slav, yep. and you went for the the quiet Slav. So, Correct. Uh, I've been told that this line is surprisingly dangerous for black. Is I guess it that must can be, be. Absolutely. must be your impression, right? <laughs> I, in the semi-slav especially, yeah, I so think there's a lot of um, venom. Uh, so this is actually, I got my first uh, GM uh, victory in this line with, nice. with Knight BD2. So. Yeah, so what's the idea of this this move then? Because, you know, to, to mm -hmm. my beginner eyes, right. C3 square, pretty good square for a knight. Mm -hmm. D2 square. Not, as, Not good. as good of a square, right. So exactly. where are you going here? So the idea is that in the Moran lines where you go knight c3, yeah. and then you know later you'll develop your bishop to d3, right? Let's say knight bd7, bishop d3. Um, black will wait for you to develop the bishop, then they'll take on c4, nice. make you spend another tempo with You've your bishop. The tempo. Then they'll play b5, make you spend a third tempo with your bishop. And, and you go somewhere. Um, yeah, and you know that's fine, of course. But the yeah. idea with knight bd2 is to kind of discourage that because we're always going to be happy to take back with the knight and improve it to a better square. I see. So knight bd7, you do develop mm -hmm. your bishop now, and yeah. so black is not doing this anymore because correct. Because then from b5, I wouldn't have to retreat to d2. I could go hop into a better square. Yeah, yeah. start invading. Okay, so bishop b7 instead. Uh, you get castle, mm -hmm. castles, and then immediately e4. So you're breaking in the center. Yep. Um, you know, black should should capture. Uh, you know, my, my impression is allowing something like this. Not not so fun. Not good. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. it takes on e4, uh, and then immediately c5. Yes. So this is this is often what I, I tell people uh, about uh, openings where you give away the center. You know, it's fine to give away the center, but you, you have to get it back. Yes. <laughs> so you have to yeah. fight back. So c5, and you went for this line with knight takes c5, mm -hmm. uh, which does allow black to simplify a little bit. But you end up in this this structure. Uh, so you have three pawns on each side versus you know this. So yes. uh, was this sort of the plan going in? Were, do, were you expecting um, a position like this? No, I was expecting her to play bishop d6 instead of bishop e7 a few moves back. <laughs> okay. So bishop e7 <laughs> got me out of out of my prep. Um, um, so so way back here we thought bishop d6. Yeah. So yeah. that's the main move, I guess. Right. Right. And then there's some different stuff. But um, yeah, this is a pretty good line for black. Um, I think this was probably her preparation because I had a game back in January against, uh, um, let's see, <laughs> Abhiman Yamishra in this exact line that, where I got like no advantage, <laughs> it just yeah, okay. fizzled out to a draw. Yeah. So she was probably trying to follow that. And in that game I went bishop g5. Okay, so that's the number so, one Which uh, is the main move. move. But um, I, I actually, in, the, in this game, I spent a long time in this position <laughs> because I didn't want to just play the same thing I played before right. and continue fa falling for her preparation. Yeah, um, this, this so. is what sort of Vladimir was talking about in his interview is, uh, especially in these round-robin norm tournaments, preparation is a huge, huge deal compared yeah. to, to open tournaments. For sure, um, for sure. So you came up with, with Queen E2, Queen E2, which has been played mm -hmm. a number of times. Yep. Um, B6 seems sensible, Makes right? Sense, just yeah. getting developed. Um, so natural moves for a little bit here. So rook d1, mm -hmm. uh, might as well get the queen out of the way. And yeah, it looks like in the two games in the database here, queen c7 was the choice. Right. Which maybe this contributed a little bit to, to the little bit of pressure you got. Because now, after bishop g5, still kind of stuck in a pin. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I guess, take me to the point where you thought that things started to go in your direction. Well, um, they started to go not in my direction okay, for a little so while. Bishop so yeah, knight e5, and I thought knight e5 uh, was going to be really good because I've got ideas of knight g4 potentially. 
you know, I've got ideas of uh, trading on f6 and going knight d7. Yep. But then I realized she plays rook d8 right away, yes, and I so realized stopping that, knight d7. Yeah, knight g4 is just met by bishop d4. I've got nothing. Ah, <laughs> uh, so this nice rerouting of the bishop. Yeah, you yeah. can see this quite a bit. Yeah. Um, and then tough to play move here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's just probably trades and it's equal. Right? Yeah. yeah, take, take, take. And if, if you'd rather be anybody, you, you might start to think about being black with this nice bishop here on, on b7. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, no knight g4 then. No, so, I thought for a long time and played rook d2, which uh, yeah. is not a move that I'm happy with. <laughs> right, so I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, optimistically you double on the d file, you know, things simplify a little bit. And it was maybe a bit your, too optimistic. Your knight gets yep. you. Um, <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, the problem here is I was planning to meet h6 with bishop h4. Right. And then I realized rook d4 is really annoying. Yeah, this, this d4 square seems to be the common problem. Yeah. This um, is what I missed, that it's a tempo on my bishop. Yeah, and the original so, plan, well, yeah, if I just drop back and she doubles on the d file. Um, yeah, you've sort of lost this race. Right. And because I also have to worry about bishop b4 at any point ruining my coordination. <laughs> yeah, bishop b4, there's, there's stuff on the e4 square to look out for as well. I and, thought I'd uh, be worse here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it looks scary. It looks scary. So, so you, you solved your d4 square problems. <laughs> I guess so, but you can see the time situation here. I'm down to 20, 24 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it took some time. So, uh, yeah, at this point I was feeling like, yeah, okay, I, things have gone wrong. I'm slightly worse, and I'm down an hour. Um, yeah, but, so then rook d6. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess this move bishop b4 is is what the, the computer mm -hmm. said on low depth at least. And yeah. to my eyes, this makes a lot of sense. And then your rook d2 move starts. I thought to, I would have to just go back to d1. Yeah, just, just back to d1. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think you really play rook c2 ever here. No, I um, wanted to do that and then go a3 and then hope to go yeah, back. But maybe. I, maybe. Do yeah, something. I, uh, but Didn't believe it though. So. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, after rook to d6, I guess you correctly pointed out why this move is not so good, because no more bishop b4. Correct, yes. Okay. And I get to go b4 unless she spends the tempo to stop it. Yeah. yeah. So a3, you get that kind of for free, because a5 is mm -hmm. um, maybe not completely necessary, but important to stop your, your idea of getting the, the space on the queen side. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, your, your optimistic uh, play has worked it out. Worked, it kind of <laughs> worked got out, that. yeah, yeah. You got what you were envisioning. So rook 88. And so now you just play this nice move h3, just sort of sitting, right? Yeah. Okay, so bishop a8, bishop c2, queen b7. Um, she made a threat, so <laughs> you stopped it. Or takes d2, takes, and now queen over to c7. And didn't look like much here, uh, no. right? So uh, how do you try to generate something in a position like this? Well, one thing that I would love to accomplish is getting in the b4 pawn break and right. mobilizing my queenside majority. Um, the other plan that I could come up with was to target the b6 pawn. Right, okay. You so could. a5 has made a little weakness here. Um, so you're thinking either you find a way to target mm -hmm. that or you find a way to get the, a passed pawn and, and yeah. get something to play for. Yeah, and if I could get some imbalance, uh, if I could get uh, the bishop pair or something, you know, get a favorable trade in, that would... Or if I could infiltrate to d8 with a queen or something. Yeah. You know, that was another way I could try to get an advantage. So you came so. up with bishop f4, mm -hmm. trying to sort of shake loose black's hold on the d-file, I guess. Yep. So rook d2, queen d2, queen e7. Um, and then you came up with this nice idea of knight back to e5. And yep. uh, I was really interested by your decision of, of how to deal with this bishop on c5, which I guess is coming up here in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So black uh, plays this move, knight e4. And tell me about bishop takes knight. Uh, I have what, to. <laughs> you have to. Otherwise, f2 falls. Oh, well, so. f, f2 falls. So I guess, well, you saw this coming then with knight e5. I so did, you, I did. Uh, yeah. Rather than play a move like queen e2, um, you, you thought just yeah, give up the bishop for the knight and no worries. Mm -hmm. I, no worries because of the follow-up that I had in mind. Right. I knew that black wouldn't be able to keep the bishop pair. Fair enough. So, yeah, knight, knight d7. Um, yeah. This is the follow-up you're talking about. So you immediately target this bishop on c5. Mm -hmm. But then the move that I found maybe to be one of the most interesting was the decision to go bishop e3 here rather than just capturing this bishop. So, so yeah. tell me about that. Well, if I capture the bishop, it's opposite color bishops. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I thought it would be very, very drawish. Okay. Uh, and I really wanted to win this game. So right. um, the original plan here was actually bishop to c7 to target ah, okay. the b6 pawn. So but then keeping everything on. I calculated bishop c6. Bishop takes b6, I thought at first would win a pawn, but black has a desperado, bishop takes f2. Ah, okay. 
Texas. Right. And then again, it's opposite color bishops. And they I have my pass pawn firmly blockaded, pawn. right? Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. I thought I have a pass pawn, but it's going nowhere. Right. This is just going to be a draw. Right. Yeah. And I guess in, in these lines, you probably know, you, queen you can takes. try to go uh, queen c3 or something. I thought maybe you would go here, here, try and take something, but uh, potentially. But if the if b5 right now, for example, yeah, b5 I'm already would forced to trade, and my extra pawn on the queen side doesn't it doesn't look very good now. Yeah, so it takes probably black just takes the pawn back, but then you know this is not not going anywhere. Yeah. So you came up with bishop b3 to to try and keep uh, chances alive. Mm -hmm. um, so now, rather than uh, trading the knight for the bishop, you get the bishop for yes. the, the bishop. Um, f takes e3. And to my eyes, this structure is actually pretty good, right? No. no. It's terrible? <laughs> terrible? Uh, it, no, it's not a, it's not a great structure, yeah. I, I wouldn't say. My king is exposed now. The e3 pawn is isolated and could be weak. Right. Um, I justified it because I thought I was just winning the b6 pawn by force. Okay, fair and, enough. And I think I am. Um, yeah. The, the point I was trying to make is that this lateral defense could, oh, could actually be quite, quite helpful. Yes. Whereas in sort of this structure, um, okay, let's, let's play some nonsense moves. Let's say takes, takes, and you're back here. Um, immediately, you know, things like, uh, you know, let's say knight b6, immediately things like queen b7 are going to start to be tricky, and you're, you're not uh, defending be. your, yeah. your g-pawn. Like, okay, I mean, even... I don't know if this works. There could but, be tactics uh, <laughs> like that, potentially, yes, yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I like this FE move just because it, it, it sort of allows for this. Um, so black came mm -hmm. up with bishop c6, and you were correct. You're, you're just taking b6 immediately. Then after queen to c5, um, this is where it sort of all fell apart. So, uh, the next move is where it fell yeah. apart. I was happy with the move that I came up with here because um, I, I was thinking originally that this is just going to be a draw. Um, if, if I go queen d4, which was the original right. plan, she goes queen g5. Yeah, and you still and, have these issues here. And I have um, to go back. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's no... Um, I thought here, about I e4, guess, but well, she could even take it. Awkward. She could even take it and then go uh, queen to c5, potentially. Eh, this, this looks... I have a pass pawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true, that's true. Maybe um, there's another way she could play. Or something. Uh, I'm not five. sure. You go to b5. Oh, that's, that's true. There's there's chances if um, you know there's chances here. Yeah, pass it pawn is good. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, to your point, you, you came up with a better move. So you know, queen, queen d4 may I be okay, so. but the uh, engine will probably say they're both equal. But yeah. I thought so, this was really tricky. Knight to c8, yeah. and so it looks at first glance like your your knight is hanging in a lot of different ways. Yes. Um, <laughs> so what were you uh, what, what were you calculating here? What was what were you expecting? Well, I calculated exactly yeah. what happened in the you game. Calculated pretty this much. One. That was good. Yes, I would, uh, this tactically saves my c4 pawn. Yeah. Um, I was also calculating any discoveries, like bishop takes g2, I have the inter in between move queen d8 check. Right. So if you capture, right. then black can capture, but you go check. And takes. And then, and then there's no perpetual, no queen g5 check or anything like that. My queen has that covered. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And then it looks like the computer is the computer, and it says, you know, I'm not scared of being down a piece. I'm going to check you forever. And then it's a draw. That's fair. Um, That's fair. Black but, has, my knight is very out of play. Yeah, and It's um, not, not that easy to play over the board, right? You no. know, us, us humans were a little bit more reluctant to just give away our pieces for free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so she did play queen c4 in the game which loses to what was played. So I was yeah. sort of surprised to see this move because it looks I sort of right away like um, like Black is just, just busted. Yeah, um, she was in time pressure. Uh, yeah. She was actually, she was about to play King H7 and then uh, at the last second she uh, changed her mind. So I, ah, I got so King H7 there. here. Yeah, which yeah. I think is a, is a pretty good try. Um, I was just gonna go Knight D6, I think, and uh, yeah, so now, now that this isn't with check, uh, black, right. of course, is, is getting active counterplay. Okay. So knight d6, and then, okay, you have an extra pawn. Um, and yep. the game continues, I guess. <laughs> right. Uh, maybe even king back to g8 here. <laughs> yeah, be, uh, defend the f7 uh, pawn. An interesting way to go. Uh, but instead, you end in glory, knight to e7. And I was having some fun looking at these lines where, uh, uh, you know, looking at, like, king g7. Oh, I didn't even see king g7. Oh my goodness. And, okay. And here I was looking at knight c8, queen g3, but uh, you do you do have have the win here. Uh, queen h8, knight. No, no. Queen uh, h8. 
Uh, yeah, queen h8, knight e7, and yeah. queen d4. Knight e7, queen d4. There we go. And I didn't see knight e7. I was staring at this for like uh, t three minutes at least, and I was like, uh -huh. knight d6, no good. <laughs> White is lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh, wow. the, the, the chat room sort of had the answers for me. So we got there in the end. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought she would definitely try queen g7. I was very surprised to see, see queen d1, because I thought, you know, it, it, it's well, not, I think not we so easy. both if, totally uh, missed that move. Yeah, like you, you have to play this knight c8, and then, wow. you know, it's like, okay. There are, there are a number of ways to do it, but mate, yeah. mate in three, going to be good enough here. Actually, mate in one, in this case, when yeah. I have the pawn on g4, queen h8. Right. So, yeah, yeah queen, queen d1, no good. Queen g3, though, eh, kind That's of scary. tricky. That's all tricky. All right, yeah. but all is well. You know, there, there is justice in the world sometimes. Y you can't play like this and not get checkmated with black. <laughs> like, so yeah. you got there in the end. King g7 uh, was not played. Queen d1, g4, and then she, she ended up resigning here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is this your favorite game of your chess career? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 it's memorable, of course. It's yeah. going to be memorable being uh, the, my final game to earn the IM title. Um, I, I don't think it was the smoothest game or, or anything like that, um, but I am happy with a few things. I'm happy with Knight C8. and. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, a very nice finish as well. So, do you have white or black against Aaron tomorrow? I've got black, black against Aaron. All right. Yes. Well, you just if you hold him to a draw, then uh, then you will walk away the champion. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. I'll see well, what I can do. <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, yes. international master elect Josh Postuma. Congratulations again, uh, and good luck in in your final game tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Caleb. Thanks. Oh, there he is, brand new. I am Josh Postuma. You love to see it. Um, so with that, we do have a couple games remaining here in the day. We've got two games in the IM section that we'll keep an eye on and two games in the GM section. Um, I was interested in what was going on in this Alice Lee game against Pedro. Things have really blown up here. Uh, by blown up, I mean just every pawn on the board has disappeared for Alice, but she didn't get checkmated yet. Um, so how do we get here? We left it after this move. Uh, yeah, rook b3 to a3. And then white came up with this idea of f5, actually. So Alice, uh, you know, these pawns in front of her king actually not giving her all that much shelter. So she figured, why not uh, break up black's uh, pretty little structure as well and get some counterplay. Uh, I had mentioned this move b5 uh, sort of offhand. I, I think that this move rook a5 is the response and, and why that wasn't played. Otherwise, this would have been an interesting idea. Hit the rook, maybe trade off these queenside pawns, try to hole up, get some kind of fortress on the king side. But she goes for f5 instead. Queen a2, now we take on g6, take on g6, and rook e1. So pretty scary stuff, uh, trying to hold on to this pinned knight. Queen to b3 now, making some threats over here. King to g1. Uh, stepping out of the check, uh, rook a2 back, and yeah, now g4. So Alice, uh, again, her king is weak, so she's figuring, you know, I might as well try to make my opponent's king weak as well and try to get my counterplay uh, against the monarch. Okay, so in the game, uh, black picks up this b4 pawn as well. We see another check, and now we are at the current position. So a minute 50 on the clock for Alice, minute 30 on the clock for uh, uh, Pedro here. And Pedro is two pawns to the good. Now, the bad news is they're both rook pawns. So of course, you can imagine, you know, this I think would definitely not be Pedro's best idea. Uh, if you trade off these guys, you know, this pawn, uh, not going to be on the best square uh, for black. If the rooks get traded and I can sacrifice my knight for this A pawn, run my king to this corner, and I never lose the game. So not at all going to be an easy end game to win for Pedro here. The good news is, with two major pieces on the board and white having literally no shelter for the king, uh, I think he's going to be able to use that to his advantage. Keep playing against this knight. This bishop and this pawn, they don't provide much shelter for the black king, but they, they do provide sort of enough. So I'm expecting, like, maybe queen g6 here, uh, with the idea being to just uh, c come after the king. Although... Alice might be very direct, play queen d3, trying to trade, trade these guys off, but there are, there are still resources here to, uh, to keep, things, keep things on the board with black. Um, so we do actually have moves. Um, queen to b6 check was played rather than queen g6, and now queen e3. And I think we're going to leave this one because this is an endgame. It'll, it'll take some time. Maybe Caleb gets fm tomorrow. Definitely not because I'm not playing tomorrow. 
Okay, let's check on the other game going on in the I Am section. We've got the game against Ezra Paul Chambers. Uh, so what's the story here? We've got Rook and Knight versus Rook and Knight, and uh, the game has this nice F pawn uh, that she's going to try to use to win the game, and I think she will succeed. Uh, difficult to touch any of the black pieces here. If you move this knight somewhere, um, I think this just ends the game on the spot. Checkmate is pretty strong. So she needs this knight, or sorry, Ezra needs this knight here, uh, so that after king e6, uh, we have knight f4 with check. So that's why this knight's on g2. Black tries to go with c5, trying to potentially distract some of the white pieces by creating a passed pawn. But I, I think this one's only a matter of time. I think this move f5 is pretty desirable. And now, um, you know, we can even sort of keep it simple here. Check and go, 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 go. Not sure what black is doing against this idea. I think you can just win, just win very concretely. Like, you know, there's, there's a check. You can go here. And OK, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm not playing the most accurately, but uh, I seem to be winning. OK. So not so good for Ezra. Uh, I think if you ask the engine, it will say the same thing. Plus seven, pretty good. How, what does it think about my plan? This way, f5, and yeah, c4, take, take, f6, f7, f8, all pretty good. Yeah, I was going rookie seven here. This says it's mate in eight. So pretty good for Begim. Um, and I think score sheets are actually being signed. Uh, so it looks like Begim has won by resignation. Uh, Ezra, not going to see this one through. Just a uh, tough finish. Um, OK, so with that, Begim, I think, moves on to a very respectable score as well. Um, I think she has uh, four and a half. Might have made that up. I think she's like plus one. Um, and the chat room is asking me, are you absolutely sure that Alice can draw that end game um, down uh, draw that two pawn down position with a queen trade. Well, we're gonna find out because queen g6 was played, queen d3 was played, and my move, rook e4, did not make an appearance. Um, uh, Pedro did decide to trade the queens and then went a5. That is a very confusing move. That is a very, very, very confusing move. Rook d5 on the board is attacking two pawns at the same time. Um, maybe, maybe uh, this is winning if you just like defend your pawn, but. Yeah, a5, rook d5, like one of these pawns falls now, and at the very, very, very least, we're getting um, rook and bishop versus rook, which, you know, obviously is, is going to be a, a difficult uh, uh, difficult endgame to hold, but should be a draw nonetheless. And I'm not even so sure you get that here with, with black. I mean, you go rook a5, and how, how do you advance your pawn? I think you go bishop b2. Um, and we might get the game for an interview. Um, sounds like she might be available. Um, bishop b2, and I mean, you can, you can try to push this guy. I'm going to bring my king over. And a3, I guess. Bring my king over again. Hard to push this guy any further, right? Hard, hard to get much further with, with black here. Mm. Um, meanwhile, in the GM section, we have interesting things going on here as well. Of course, we, we saw Vlad's game, uh, which ended in victory. Uh, we also have Evan Park against uh, Ivan, which this is looking um, kind of familiar. Uh, looks a lot like the Yalis Lee game, actually. Um, so this one should also be a draw, it looks like, although this, I think, is significantly harder with the B pawn rather than an A pawn and uh, the, the white king well positioned to help defend the pawn. You know, this one looks like it might actually go to rook and bishop versus rook, uh, which is more you can say for the other game. Uh, and the last game that we still have in progress is this one between uh, Victor Madvishin and uh, Kostya Kvitsky. Uh, and it looks like Victor is in the final stages of trying to convert this, this rook versus knight end game here. Uh, the king is cut off. The, the knight is not going to be able to stop this pawn effectively and should be a win. And I think we are getting the game here in the studio to talk about her win against Ezra Chambers that just happened. Um, and so, without further ado, hello, welcome Hi. to the show, Begin. Thank have, you. Have you been on the show yet? Uh, no. All right, well, congratulations Thank on you. the win today. This brings you to plus one in the event? Uh, I guess so. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Finally. Yes. So, uh, tell me uh, about your game today. 
Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, well, I have a feeling that after the opening, I was much better. Yep. So, uh, of course, we got there through um, yeah, this sort of this is a tricky theory, move order. Right? Yeah, yeah. So queen b3. Um, queen b6. And of course, w whenever you know black develops the bishop out early outside the pawn chain, sometimes the light squares uh, fall victim. So queen b6 here to defend b7, yeah. and then so d3. yeah d3, knight bd7. And after knight goes to d7, I have to take on d d5. I guess this is a nice move order because knight uh, cannot come to c6 anymore. So I oh, okay. So yeah, now now the point is after c takes d, you know, black just, would love to play knight c6, yeah, knight but now is just... white should be a bit better because this knight is misplaced. Yeah. Okay. So e takes instead. And queen c2. Okay, this is a little bit tricky because uh, if bishop d6, then uh, I can play e4. Okay, so bishop so d6. He cannot and, really put yeah. bishop d6 or bishop c5, and I. So how how does this one go if takes takes bishop g6? I mean, I just have an advantage now yeah, just already. Like knight c3, I, I just put my this this is rook d1, bishop e, e3, everything's yeah, just, just coming. No, no center pawn for black. Yeah. So bishop d6 is not so good. So bishop e7 instead. Maybe uh, black black ha had to play queen c5. It looks very nice for uh, like for black. Queen c5. Uh, okay, so your sure queen about of course. This position because uh, I'm threatening e4, and after queen c5, I cannot play knight c3. So he's putting some problems, right? Ah, uh, I see. Okay, so yeah, your, your queen is just coming. well placed here on, yeah, on c2 very, to support e4. Well so you think this was the way the black needed to, to, yeah, to solve these problems? And then it looked a little bit worse for him after e4, like knight c3, yep. h6, e4. Um, so is it too late to go for, for this idea now? Yeah, bishop e3. Possibly ah, yeah. Now. Just bishop e3. And bishop d4, e4 is coming, yeah. Okay, so uh, you do break through with e4 now, and yeah. I guess this is a lot like what we were looking at. Yeah, where... it seems very nice for me. Maybe bishop e3 wasn't so good. Maybe rook d1 immediately is better. Um, why is that? Uh, because uh, I want to put my queen somewhere on e2, probably, and then play e5, right? Okay. And then rook should be on d d1, but I'm not sure about the bishop yet. Yeah, so bishop e3 might interfere with, with your queen yeah. e2 idea because uh, you, you need the support of the pawn yeah, still. Yeah, probably okay. it will be better for me. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, bishop I e3 al that up a also bit. looks looks quite good, though, right? Yep. Um, so queen a6, and uh, you just bring the rook to the natural square. Um, so queen b3. <laughs> yeah, so... It, Okay, so I guess okay, so your ideas were revolving around e5, yeah. right? That's what you're saying? So yeah. uh, to do that, you, you brought the queen out to b3. Yeah. Is there any, uh, like, other move here? I have not checked this game with Maybe just a play computer, some, like, but yeah. So it, it looks like in the database a number of things have been tried. Just something like a3, just sort of yeah, sit on I the position. Yeah, I have an advantage. I messed, uh, messed it up. I had the feeling that I shouldn't go to this, like, force lines. Okay. Um, so queen b3 is very yeah. forcing because you know you have the, these problems on we e4. Knight c5 so, is the only move. so knight c5, uh, attacking b4. both things, and you've got the pin. Wait, is it still a theory? Um, oh my uh, god, two people play. Yeah, it looks like there's a Jumba, uh, Jumabayev game here actually. Um, wow. I would I would not have guessed. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I didn't know the position. I just woke up, I like checked uh, his games. I was like, okay, I'm just playing this line. We'll yeah. see. So. Okay, so queen b4 and, and black has to solve these problems somehow to, mm -hmm. to get counterplay here. So it looks like queen b6, and queen you're c4. still following this game, <laughs> queen c4. Probably um, they repeated the moves, right? Queen yeah, a6? Yeah, so queen a6. Oh, actually, it looks like in the Jumabayev game, this, this was played. Oh, okay, well. amazing. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are just the best. <laughs> uh, knight a6, and fortunately for you, uh, Jumabayev was, had an advantage in this game, it looks like. Oh. Um, so Jubabayev came up with this move, knight e5, Yeah, I really it looks wanted like. to play knight e5, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I didn't do that. But I was very tempted to play e5 because that's how I, like, I wanted to play e5 for a while. Yeah, th you that's know? been your idea leading yeah. up to this point. But when I uh, got the position, I really wanted to play knight e5, but I wasn't sure about bishop c5 after knight e5. Yeah, so I mean, this was a very strong bishop, so it kind of feels bad to let it go, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I guess structurally here, it's it's just quite good for you. Is, yeah, is what the computer is saying. Coming to right. Yeah, the the knights don't have squares, and yeah. your knights kind of do have squares. Anyways, I still got something similar, but with my pawn on e5, which was worse a little bit. Sure. For me. Uh, so this knight came out to g4, uh, bishop d4, and now f6. Okay, so it looks like black is is sort of getting active compared he to this. He equalized other one, right? yeah. the position, no? Already. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
And we'll get back to this game. But it looks like we do have a result in the Alice Lee game uh, against Pedro Rodriguez. That game has been agreed to a draw. So we saw there at the end um, the sort of strange move A5, just uh, allowing this double attack of the pawns. And any winning chances that were left sort of go away after one of these pawns falls. Oh my god. Black was winning here? Um, Black was at least a lot better, it looks wow. like. Um, uh, way, way back. Um, we, we had this position, yeah. which looks kind of very, very bad. And then it sort of got simplified. And then I, I really disagreed with um, Pedro's decision to, to let the queens off the board here. I felt Probably like he, he just missed uh, queen like Yeah, queen I mean, I, I thought even here you can go rook e4 um, and, and try to keep pieces um, on. But yeah. uh, he, he went for the pure end game. And then uh, after a5, it's, it's, yeah, there's just nothing to do. Probably, that's fine. Yep. Um, but let's, let's check back in on your game. So we saw e5, bishop d4, and then, yeah, black somehow is, is finding squares for the pieces again. Yeah. Um, so you sort of have to win again now. <laughs> I know. I was yeah. a little bit annoyed. I was like, oh my god, e5 was such a like uh, stupid move, to be honest. I was like, what I did? Yeah, I saw the but... position. I, uh, I had a feeling that I'm faster. Then I started to realize I just don't have anything. So what was the, the next critical moment, uh, would you say? Uh, so probably... You... Uh, when he played bishop g6. So, uh, yeah, black comes out with bishop c5, yeah. and these moves just all seem very logical and normal. Uh, both players just bringing their pieces in the game. So this f3 move, I thought, was, was pretty interesting. So um, I really liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the move, I was like, there's no way that I'm not making it. I yeah. Just, I um, just really wanted to play it. So, of course, what, what's the main point here? I mean, I'm controlling e4 square, and right. I'm not, uh, like, giving him easily exchange the uh, pieces and he has a time trouble. He needs to figure out where to put uh, put his pieces, which is not easy, right? Yeah. So you're making a threat as well, right? With yeah, with and before is coming too. But of course, he can protect a5. Yep. Which so he did. this induces a5, um, and then it's just a, a matter of getting your pieces in the game, I guess. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, still I don't have anything. I was like very curious. You can go ahead. Yeah. So After here's Ricky bishop Sam? g6. Yeah, I was uh, curious if if I should play a3, a4, then uh, like f4, or immediately f4. Probably a3 would be better because a4 in some lines I I can take on a4, knight a4 takes. So um, just oh, okay, so no, something put like f4 after that. For okay, example, yeah. he played rook e8, right? Um, so rook f8 in the so game. yeah, we didn't include. Yeah, uh, if you those. include it, bishop c4. Okay. King f8, I attack on e8. Okay. And then um, if it's are, the... Yeah, are there immediate problems No, here? king takes on e7. Ah, okay, okay. So take on e8 and then... Unfortunately. Yeah, it's the same position, but uh, in this yeah. line... I guess I, rook takes? Yeah, rook takes, f5. And then bishop f7. I can... Now I can think of knight e6 even, you know? Yeah. It, and it, a4 is hanging. It, it definitely looks like black's pieces have somehow been, yeah. been misplaced. And then pawn is hanging at some yeah, point. So something Maybe. like this. and. But of course, um, these things are like not forced. Th this is hanging now, so uh, yeah. scary, Bishop scary stuff. Bishop needs to take it. Um, but then just... Uh, well, it then, takes, I guess, 95. Yeah. It looks, looks very complicated. I don't know. It yeah. looks very equal to me. Um, so, yeah, so you thought it might be useful to include a3 yeah. just because then this pawn is going to be weak. Yeah, I had a um, feeling it could but be good. But then these lines should be very similar, I guess. Yeah. So y you follow more or less the game uh, with this king f8 and takes, takes, and now f5. Yeah. Um, so here, rather than go for knight e6, uh, you, you just take on f7. No, knight, so. uh, yeah, knight e6 bad. Just, yeah, uh, makes I'm less sense here, I guess. I'm creating right, again, for myself. Yeah, so takes, um, uh. and now knight e6 because you have... Uh, this idea. Yeah. Um, so g6 by black, trying to... Maybe king f6 was better. Just he, He's not uh, giving me any weaknesses or any squares. Uh, he can play g6 literally any time. Yeah, I mean, I guess you go g4, right? g4, then he can take on uh, e6, no? Rook d7, knight c5. Yeah. Um, it looks better It seems reasonable. Yeah, yeah. I, w <laughs> I was like, after king f6, I couldn't... Uh, like find much for white. So yeah, I wasn't sure what to do. Uh, I mean, this this pawn is attacked, I guess. So it's yeah. it's either g4 or or you know trade and, and yeah. do something. But so it's not uh, easy. So g6 instead, and you thought that this might just be creating 
sort of a harder weakness for, yeah. for black to that's defense. That's why I decided to just go back. Okay. Um, I, I want to save some pieces. Now I have weakness on h6, and maybe that like a5 b7 structure is not the, the best. Yeah, you, you have some targets. Yeah. Um, so knight f6 in the game. Um, you come with king g2. And takes takes. Uh, king d2. I don't know where he did wrong, to be honest. At some point, he just collapsed his position. Oh, and um, we have more breaking news. Uh, Kostya has resigned in his game against Victor Matviation. Um, so we sort of saw this coming in the, in the Rook versus Knight end game. But we'll, we'll continue on here. Uh, so Knight f4, King f7. And you said you weren't quite sure where he went wrong. Yeah. Um, so did you feel, you, you felt that you were pressing here though, right? Yeah, I mean, of if, course. if anyone's trying to win, it's Yeah, it's sure, I'm pressing, but like at some point, just Black's position just collapsed. It, it was very like surprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got Rook d6, Knight e5, and then Black simplified a little bit, yeah. and goes Knight g6. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, you just here, have I, active I cannot pieces. really take the pawn, because Rook is going to be very bad on a5. Um, I don't yeah, have so much time. Rook d5 here, and you're saying that, uh, you know, I guess you do take on a5, but, but it's... It, but here it's uh, it's different, because his rook is not active. I don't know. Yeah, this move, rook d5, sort of seems... He didn't um, have time, unfortunately. That's why he just, like, he needed to make a move. Yeah. Um, so this tournament, of course, is just 90 plus 30, no extra time. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> it seems like maybe you're using that to your advantage uh, in yeah, this, this game somewhat. Yeah, it's easier for me to play this position, and Black has to defend somehow. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it looks like things have, have already gone pretty wrong here, um, yeah. in, in my opinion. Maybe this move... It's just, uh, like, yeah. probably it's possible to defend it, but it's, it's not that easy. Yeah, may, maybe with black here, were you considering ideas of, of him just kind of trying to I push mean, and simplify on the side of the board? Uh, yeah, he, he needed to do that. I yeah. thought it's the only chance he has. Yeah, this this whole concept with with ninety six, then then I guess this b three move is very clever, right? Yeah. You're you're just locking down the queen side a little bit, locking down this weakness on a five. Yeah. And, and he need, yeah. he shouldn't play on on the king side, right? He right. Needs to play on the queen side, which he didn't do. Yeah. So a after you win this a five pawn, I, I think practically it's it's almost impossible yeah. with with no time. So. Yeah. Um, we were well, both yeah. like playing uh, last seconds, so it's very hard to defend. Yeah. You know, it was funny. It's um. I, w I was about to play knight f5, actually, instead of knight e4. I was terrified to see that knight f6 is just a... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I yeah, that, like, that would have oh, been an end to the so game. <laughs> the game is still so tricky. That's, that's why I had, to, I had to be a little bit careful. Yeah, it's, it's always not, not so easy with, with the king H4 in the center. h is yeah. a, like, very bad move. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I thought the, the way you handled it looks looks very very clean. You yep. just uh, advance the king, and then uh, you know this is obviously just just yeah, the end of the game. Yeah, it's just winning. Yeah. Um, you just captured on c5, which is sort of yeah. the simplest, I guess, in time pressure. Uh, I was just looking at the very direct, just just go go go. But, yeah, uh, I had a feeling it should be easier than taking on c5, and yeah. then I I said, okay, I don't have time. Let's just take take on c5 first and start yeah. the thing. Like, N nothing after. to calculate if you yeah. take c5. Whereas just, here, like I mean, you, you get checked, and you're like, ah. Uh, <laughs> and then knight f4, knight h5, all these things coming. It's just yeah, like. I, it, it's winning, but I it, it's all winning. I didn't see king d6. No, th this is a, a pretty good rule, I think. Um, Victor uh, Blues. Uh, uh, was also saying this where he tells the students like if you don't need to calculate then just don't calculate yeah, just choose, especially choose the simple when you win. have 30 seconds you just make a move right yeah, you take sure. the pawn and then you think all right well very nice game to game uh who do you have in the last round tomorrow morning uh Antoa. Uh, yes. yes uh so that'll be a good uh mizzou versus slu matchup yes yeah. as usual <laughs> um have you played her much before uh, I don't think I, I have played her in person, to be honest. Probably it's going to be our first one. But uh, right. like she joined the university during the pandemic, so we played a couple of online games, yeah. but uh, not like classical one. All right. Well, congratulations on the win today. Thank Best you. of luck in your game tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, you for joining. Much. Okay, with that, I believe we just have one game remaining, um, which is going to be this game between Evan and Ivan. And uh, much like the Alice Lee game, we have a rook, bishop, and pawn against a rook and a knight. Uh, in this case, I was saying that this one is going to be a little bit more difficult for black to hold than in the Alice Lee situation, but should still be a draw. The, the big question here is going to be, 
Is white going to be able to force the sacrifice of the knight for the pawn? If so, we're going to get, of course, rook and bishop versus rook, which should be a draw. But you know, even the grandmasters have a tendency to, to mess up that one. Um, so we shall see if, uh, if we get that far in this game. Um, to my eyes, it looks like uh, Ivan with the black pieces here is going to be doing a pretty decent job of... Uh... Wait, is this just concretely a draw? Uh, I was thinking he's doing a pretty decent job of slowing down this pawn. Um, and it looks like he's finding some, some nice ideas here. So, so we just saw knight c5, king b4, and now this knight comes back to d3 with check again. And be careful about going up the board here, because uh, I think that after knight to c5, uh, if you try b6, what's going on? You can't. The bishop hangs. OK. Looks very, very difficult to, to make any progress. So I, I like this construction that black has found, where he's immobilizing the pawn by, by interfering with the rook's defense of the bishop. Uh, I guess with white here, you can potentially try to swing the rook around to the side. And it looks like this might actually give give black some, some difficulties. Um, knight e5 was the choice instead. Oh, and I, I just entirely missed this idea. So black is now threatening to take on c6 and draw the game? Maybe not. I don't think you draw the game here, actually. Um, this is losing. OK. So knight e5, still within the drawing margins, but uh, getting tricky. Uh, rook c1 was played rather than rook c2. And yeah, this, this one is it's just not easy. Um, in fact, it's so not easy that I'm, I'm almost searching for a way to give up my knight for this pawn. Um, and it's not good if you're searching uh, for, for the sacrifice into the, the rook and bishop versus rook endgame. Uh, I do have the table base open here, and the table base says knight d3 is a draw, which sounds very confusing to me, because this would attack a knight. Um, and king c5? What? Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, that's disgusting. That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> um, so knight d3 draws the game here. If rook d1, king c5, if you take the knight, I take on b5. And this is a draw. That's, that's a good one. That's disgusting was the correct word for it. OK, so we get rook f8 now. And white again is, is searching for a way to progress this pawn up the board a single square. So what if I go bishop h1? The, the point being, saving my bishop from the threat of capture. Then it looks like it might be time, might be time just to do this, just to say, enough is enough. Give me your pawn. Let's play some chess. Not, a, not an envious task. Vladimir, I knew I was saying Victor. I was thinking of Matt Vietian. Oh my goodness, that's embarrassing. Um, sorry, apologies to Vladimir, our, our GM norm group winner. Uh, whoops. OK, so what do we have going on here? Uh, not this. So in the game, rook f8, king b6, so not bishop h1. Uh, rook back to b8 check, king a7. OK, so white isn't improving the king here before, before doing anything. Um, and what to do here with black? I guess you move the rook out of the way, rook back to f8. And yeah, I mean, I, this bishop h1 idea seems like the try, right? You, you want to go bishop h1 and yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what else you do with black here. Like, it seems like you, you have to go for this, this knight d7 and, and just sacrifice. So white has done the, the first step in winning these endgames, which is force the sacrifice of the knight for the pawn. And then the next step is potentially harder uh, against a uh, good defense. That step is winning rook and bishop versus rook, which is a theoretical draw. But you do see you do see this endgame get messed up quite a bit, uh, even by players at at the absolute highest level. So we'll see if White comes up with Bishop H1 or or has some other idea. You can also just be annoying here, get, give a check or something. But uh, I'm not so sure that this check is going to help you, right? King C7. I think your your best idea is to come back, um, and then you know Black will will repeat. That being said. Getting some extra time on the clock might not be a bad idea for Evan. Mm -mm. Let's see, he was reaching. He was reaching for something. King b7. Okay, that move seems strange. Uh, I guess the idea is actually this move, uh, rook, d, rook d1 check. And this move actually apparently is, is quite tricky is quite tricky. I'm told 
by the table base here. Now, this one is funny. That uh, this move loses, but uh, the loss is prevented by the 50 move rule. So, the more you know. <laughs> that is actually kind of insane. This move, loss also prevented by the 50 move rule. Apparently, it takes 122 ply to win this position uh, before you get to move the B pawn. Um, so, there's that for you endgame fiends. Maybe we'll click through that line just for fun. Um, only two moves draw. And this one, very human, makes a lot of sense. King's on the best square, stopping your king from getting to c7. Make the king move. Go, uh, not knight d7. Go rook f2 here, I guess. And then I'm sort of confused. This is starting to look awkward. Starting to look awkward. The king is getting forced away. Maybe now I'm going to come with, with something like bishop h1. But uh, I, I think, yeah, I think we're still doing okay here. Like here, for example, you, you're even getting checked again b1, or sorry, rook b2, and not much progress being made, I think. Okay, so rook f7 played, so we're not going to see knight g6 with the loss being prevented by the 50 move roll. Let's just, let's just see what this is. Yeah, this, this is the line. This is clearly the line. Don't know why you would think this wasn't the line. H7, king f6, yeah, and only 50 more moves to go before you get to move your b pawn. Only 50 more moves. So the king gets drawn all the way to the other side of the board, and then rook h1, rook c3, rook f1, all of these moves, definitely what the players had in mind. And then, of course, rook f5. So, sorry, not rook f5. Rook f2 is better. Rook c1, <laughs> now rook f5. Of course, the, the stutter step is important. Yeah, I'm done looking at that. I am done looking at that. Okay, so rook f7 and then rook f4 was black's choice. So still putting the rook behind the pawn, but now the idea, I think, is that uh, he gains access to the c4 square, which might actually be very important. So rook d1 check. Now the king does still have to move further away from the pawn. So sad. Uh, and after bishop d5 check, thankfully, all of our pieces are on dark squares, and we are allowed to just step back to the d file with the king. Um, black here taking a moment though, taking a moment. How could a loss be prevented by the 50 move roll with the pawn on the board? That's brutal. Yeah, the problem is um, as soon as you bring this pawn to b6, then it's on a dark square and it might get attacked by the knight. Um, so I guess there's just 60 moves of setup before you, you touch that pawn. Okay, so king d6 on the board. And you can see the players there in the lower right hand. And what to do with whites? White's doing a very good job of making it tricky, by the way. I'm sort of glossing over some of these things, but some of these moves are, are not, not so obvious to draw. Like, this one especially, after king b7, these, these are the only two moves that draw. Like, rook f4 here, you might think is enough, but it's no good. Um, yeah, the win prevented by, by the 50 move roll, though, so. Uh, the, the point is, though, like, you know, the, the king starts to get pushed to the other side of the board, and that's when it can, can really get tricky. So that's the main thing that, that black is hoping to prevent here, is getting the king pushed all the way to the, to the wrong side of the board. So king e7, of course, is the only move. Um, it gets played, and now king c7. So you see this idea now by, by white. He's uh, cutting off rook c4 check. And he's just hoping to drive the black king uh, away. So again, it's a very tricky moment here for black. You, you have to play one of these two moves, according to the table base, in order to draw. And I think the idea is very simple. You just need to force the white king off the c file, allow your king access back to this d file in the event of something like rook e1. Um, so there are only a couple moves, but I, I think they're very human moves to find. That being said, in a position like this where you know any move could be your last, uh, a any move here, uh, by black might, might be the end of the game. So Evan doing a very good job of, of applying the pressure. Yeah, and Vladimir says your, his prediction is that white will win, which uh, I, I think I tend to agree with here. There's just too many, too many ways where you can go wrong, and, and Evan is doing a, a very nice job of, of pushing this king back. Like, very difficult to, to play here. So rook f2 is played, which I, I think is... Uh, I mean, even better than, than rook f3. You just, in general, it's a little uncomfortable to put your pieces on light squares, although you can argue you're going to have to come to a light square on, on c2. 
Um, now what happens if we just go? What happens if we just go? And give a check, can be seven, and knight d7, I suppose, is the simplest. So we can't just go. We have to try a little bit harder with white. Can I explain the 50 move rule? Oh, so in chess, they have added this rule where uh, in order to stop games that are drawn, but one side isn't really willing to agree to a draw, if 50 moves are made without a piece being captured or a pawn being moved, so of course those are the two ways that you know, chess games are sort of uh, irreversibly advanced, um, then the game is declared a draw. Um, and if I declare to draw, you, you have to actually you know, write down the moves, look at them, and say, I, I would like to claim a draw. Um, so if you go 50 moves without moving a pawn or capturing a piece, the game is drawn. Uh, Bishop d5 played by white. So it looks like you know, maybe white has put this king on c7. And he's hoping to block this rook c2 check with bishop c6. And then he's hoping to go with rook e1 and again, force this king even further back. So very logical play by, by white here. Everything he's doing is sort of with this purpose of pushing that black king further and further away. Of course, this is the Lucena position, uh, gonna be easily winning for white, so no simplifications allowed. What move are we on now? Uh, let's check. Um, B6 was not played. This is an important question. Move 81 was when B5 was played. We are on move 93, so 12 moves have been played. Just 12. Rook c2 check played, and now I think bishop c6 is the idea. Yep, bishop c6 on the board. And don't look at that, that's not true. King e6 would lose. Um, so again, the, the path is very, very narrow here for black. He comes up with the only move, knight c4. Not at all an easy move to play. Um, I guess he's realizing that you just can't stop this pawn if, if you don't go knight c4. So knight c4 on the board, um, but now white is getting what he wants. This king is all the way over to the f file now. Very scary. A pawn move resets the 50 move rule. That is correct. Um, and the reason being, again, it's, it's because it's irreversible, right? As soon as you move a pawn, it, it can never go backwards. And you know, if a pawn gets to the end of the board, um, then it promotes. And then, obviously, by promoting, it's no longer a pawn, so the game cannot continue into if it, infinity is the main idea. No infinite chess games allowed. They all have an end. There was an interesting question, actually. Um, I'm not sure what the longest theoretical chess game is. I guess it would be, um, I don't know, how many pawn moves do you have? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, but then you have to calculate captures because the pawns can't get to the end of the board without capturing something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the longest uh, possible game is, but it's, it's quite long, but not infinite. So king f6 on the board, and now white has to decide how am I going to evict this knight from a square where it's defending b6. And that task is easier said than done. Um, as soon as you get the rook involved, the black king is going to step back, get closer to the action. Maybe the answer is we, we just keep bullying this black king a little bit. We, we try to find ways to, to push it further and further back, and only once it's like way on the other side of the board do we start to focus on, um, on the knight here. Um, again, though, easier said than done. This knight is sort of ideally placed. It's stopping king d6, which is a move we kind of need if we're going to push the black king back another file. So looks like black has found a pretty, pretty nice setup here. Rook e8 is a, a good move. It's very cagey. Just sort of says, all right, it's, it's your turn, black. You, you play whatever you want. So if I'm black here, I'm saying I pass. Passing is, is good. Um, knight e5 played instead. That is not a pass. Um, so still stopping b6, thanks to the, the pressure on this bishop on c6. Um, I would have been nervous about playing knight e5. I would have been nervous. I think that's the first move that I don't necessarily agree with from, from black, although it is, of course, still, still well within the drawing margins. Does rook e5 work? No, rook e5 almost never works. I take your guy. And we draw. Ah, uh, yeah. So you, you don't, practically in a game, you don't like count the moves one by one and keep a running total. 
you look, you see on move 81, you move to pawn. You can even just circle move 131 on your score sheet. So it's very, very visible to you, like when, uh, when you're going to need to move the guy. Um, so knight e5, king b7, knight back to c4 is where we are at in the live position. And white, again, starts to think. So rook e4, not going to be a good move here. Knight d6. <laughs> um, that one I can point out. Yeah, it, it looks like black has done enough to be able to sacrifice this knight for, for this pawn, right? He's actually threatening knight d6, uh, not only with the idea of capturing the rook, but also with the idea of capturing the pawn. Um, so much so that I'm wondering if king c7 is going to get played again. Is there a mask mandate for this tournament? No, there is not. Um, there hasn't been a mask mandate in St. Louis City for a few months now, um, and we generally are following the city guidelines. So we are going to see the dreaded Rook and Bishop versus Rook endgame, and then I'm going to have a fun time embarrassing myself with my lack of knowledge about it. But uh, I will try. I will try to share, share my knowledge, whatever remains of it. It's been quite a while since I looked at it, and even when I looked at it, I wasn't very thorough. So going to be, going to be a rough one. Going to be a rough one. Yeah, so white really spending some time here. He's very reluctant to allow the knight for pawn trade because, you know, then, then it, it is, of course, technically just a draw. Um, and having that knowledge can be a great comfort for, uh, for, for black. You know, just knowing whatever happens, uh, technically, it should be a draw. Yep, so king back to c7 is played, um, stopping knight d6. So knight back to e5. Um, this is two-fold repetition, which gets you nothing. And up to white now to come up with a better plan than king b7. Minute 12 on the clock for Evan. Honestly, I'm not sure how you press here. Maybe you try king d6. Maybe you, you try coming this way. And after knight c4, you just sort of, you know, you just go psycho on him. Just be like, yeah, I'm bringing my king out from in front of my pawn where it had shelter because I want to mess with your knight. I want to get your knight out of my face. And this is partially why I kind of disagree with the decision to go with, uh, to go with knight e5 because I, I just didn't want to allow this king in. I, I, I think something like a uh, pass would have been uh, actually more testing. Um, because then, I mean, where, where are you going? Like, what, what, is, what is the point of this move? What, what are you doing? Um, rook d8 is white's choice instead, not wanting to go with uh, king to d6. Now again, I'm, I want to put my knight back. I don't know why I put my knight on e5. I want it back on c4. Just, just put it back on c4. Like, what, what are we doing? Knight a4 in that position is just drawing. Um, knight a4 in what position? Knight a5? Um, yeah, I mean, I have to come back here, I guess. And I've gone in a circle. OK, you make a point. You make a point. I did go in a circle. So I suppose king d5 would be the better try. Um, not allowing this, this knight a5 idea. Although, actually, no, I, I could go king d5 here as well. If you check me. Okay, I can go here, and then I don't know if this is, oh, you have this and then this, okay. Um, so king d5 here, I guess, is, is the better try. Uh, but okay, none of that actually happened. And oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's over. Technically, a winning position after this move, rook to d5. So. Yeah, I really don't like this knight e5 idea. You know, of course, I have the benefit of a table base, um, so I can just like look and, and see what's happening. But I think knight c4 was definitely um, keeping the margins a, a lot wider for black. You, you can do a lot wrong. As long as your knight is on c4, b6 is not going to win the game. Um, and I think it was worthwhile to, to force white to find some way to kick this knight off of this very nice square. With this move knight e5, 
um, you know, suddenly b6 at some moment might be very, very dangerous. And it turns out that after king e7, rook d5, um, the table base is, is just saying that this is completely winning. So I'm, I'm going to turn off the table base now, and we're going to see if we can find it, you and me, as humans. So knight c4 must be the idea, just coming back to defend uh, against the threat. But now I imagine rook c5 is kind of devastating. Um, now b6 is a threat. If you take, I take. And what can you do? What can you do? I don't think you can do anything. I think this is dead. So knight c4, not going to be playable. But if you don't play knight c4, what do you do? You go rook e2, I just go b6. Knight c4 is too late now. I push, push, push. And that's going to be busto as well. OK, so what did black come up with? What did black come up with? Rook d5, king e6. Now rook d6 check. OK, so rook d6 by white. So now, of course, you, you can't do this because your bishop is attacked. So rook d6, king back to e7. Um, OK, so this seems reasonable. Seems like a reasonable try. So rook d6, king, king e7 on the board. Now, how do we win? How do we win here? Can we push? Can we just push? I think we can just push. Pawn goes forward. I guess this is still tricky. If you queen, then you lose. Yeah, you just lose here. Tough. So you try this one, but then check, and then queen. Yep, it's looking pretty brutal. King e7, b6 is on the board. Looks like Evan has, has found the way. So yeah, just leaving this knight on, on c4, I, I think, was, was the better try. I think this was what uh, black needed to do. So rather than knight e5, I, I would have liked to see just something like rook c1. And then maybe you know white is going to try this idea anyways um, of coming to uh, c5. But I, I think you know maybe we can reposition our rook here, go rook b1. And it's not so easy to, to get my knight uh, to, to leave the action here. Let me, let me check. Let me check. Am I drawing? No, I, I already lost. I already lost. So uh, I'm the moron. Um, nobody knows how to draw this game. Um, yeah, n n nobody knows. It's impossible. <laughs> uh, my loss was prevented by the 50 move roll, though. So I was doing OK. Um, now in the game, though, this is, this is just going to be over. So uh, we saw rook d6, king e7, now b6, as we said. Black tried this move, knight f7. Um, there are more than one way. There is more than one way to win here. This is one of them, uh, king e6. Now if you go b7, it's a draw. Check, check. Nice last ditch effort. OK, so white does not fall for it, goes rook all the way to d1, says, no thank you, I do not want to get forked. Finds the trick. And yeah, we're, we're not going to make it to, to Rook and Bishop versus Rook, thankfully. Knight e5 is played. Now we can repeat and go here. Well, not necessarily repeat, but uh, now that the, the knight is on a worse square, we can go b7. We, we sort of gained a tempo there. Yep, king e7. And I fully expect b7 now. No reason not to doesn't even take a second to think about it. He knows. He knows it's b7. OK, rook b2 on the board. And now, of course, if you queen, I can take and take. So one more moment of accuracy is going to be needed here by white. Uh, I think rook d1 again is enough. Sort of this uh, mechanism we used to, to gain a tempo last time also looks like it should be good here. Um, of course, something like rook c2 is just never going to be enough. We just make a queen. You can take me. I'll move out of the way. Queens are worth more than knights, and white will win the game. Um, this is also not going to be good enough. Um, I think simplest might be to do this, or probably just checks. Ch checks are good. Hard to lose when you give checks. Um, so should should just be directly winning here. Yeah, rook d1 played. And yeah, if you don't play rook c2, then it's over. But rook c2, as we said, not going to be enough. 
He will play rook h6. And he played rook d1. Um, and yeah, Vlad, Vlad had it right here. Black, uh, the, the path was just too narrow. Uh, Evan did a, a fantastic job, in my opinion, of, of you know, putting questions to Black that were not so easy to answer. Yeah, again, I just really, I really don't think this knight e5 idea was, was the way. I, I wanted to leave this knight on c4, uh, force white to, to be the one that's clever and, and creative and coming up with a way to, to force me off these squares. Um, this plan, though, does, does seem sort of very difficult, right? Like, let's say king e7, rook d5, and now knight a5 is the only move to, to not lose. Otherwise, rook c5 is, is going to be good enough. But that being said, knight a5, maybe not the hardest move to find in that position either. But uh, of course, you know, that, that's just one, one threat you sidestepped, and there will be more to come. Okay, knight takes e6 was played. This, of course, though, is the Lucena position. So we'll go, we'll hide behind our pawn. Um, and then we'll go rook d4 and win the game. Building a bridge. Building a bridge. Oh, also, sorry, I played rook b2 in the line I showed. You're supposed to stay over here, force the king this way, and then you can do this. So that is why you have to do this. If you go rook b2, I think um, this might also win. Just do this, and this, and this. So rook a3 is the better try, but still just rook to d, rook to d4. Why do they call it a bridge? Honestly, I have no idea. I think it's a stupid name. I think it's a dumb name for it. Um, I don't know why they say building a bridge. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It's more like a shield. You're, you're like shielding your king. You know, building a shield. Because like, what, what are you bridging? You're, you're not bridging anything. There, there's no bridge. Okay, we're back to A1. And we are, we are playing it out. We are playing out the Lucena position. Good to show the people at home. This is why you got to know your end games, kids at home. We are here live on the board. Now rook b1, king, C king c6. And it looks like the distance between these pieces is too great. You, you will never be able to block the checks. Of course, if you run behind your rook, I come back here, you don't make any progress. If you come back this way to defend your pawn, you don't make any progress. But uh, white can momentarily leave the defense of the pawn. Uh, because, of course, the rook can't attack the king and the pawn at the same time. And after check, our rook is in time to come save our life. Maybe all of your pieces are on the same file, but you also don't like it. Um, as far as why it's called a bridge, yeah. It's like, I, I don't know, because like a bridge, like... A bridge is supposed to connect things. So you would think like the bridge would connect the rook to the pawn, but like, no, this is a wall. It, it stops you, stops you from coming across. It's the opposite of a bridge. It's like if someone built a bridge and then built a massive wall in the middle of the bridge so no one could cross. And there's the handshake. That is resignation from Ivan. Um, and that is going to be the end of our round today. So lots of fun games. It's going to be a very fun round tomorrow for sure. Really looking forward to that Josh Postuma game versus Aaron Grabinski in the IM section. That will determine your IM section winner. Uh, once again, though, story of the tournament so far, Josh Postuma has secured his IM title. We crowned a new international master here in St. Louis. It's going to be a lot of fun, um, and anything else is it's just going to be a victory lap for him. So congratulations again to Josh, um, and we will see you all uh, tomorrow for some, some fun, fun chess in the final round. Um, before we sign off, why don't we take a quick look at the results for the end of today. 
course, Vladimir Belus, uh, not Victor Belus, has secured victory in the Grandmaster section uh, with his win over Josiah Stearman today. We saw a very fun game in the Sicilian there where Vlad got the best of Josiah uh, after this F5 move and then some, some complicated tactics. Uh, David Brodsky also uh, has a nice win over Joshua Rees. Chris and Balaji Dagupati have drawn their game today. Evan just defeated Ivan in the battle of the two-syllable uh, V-A-N names. Um, and we saw Kostya uh, actually lose his game to, to Victor. I think that's a typo. Uh, Victor, not Vladimir uh, Matvyshin, does defeat Kostya. And then in the IM section, our results today. Uh, of course, Josh defeated Gabriela Antova to win the international master title. Uh, Begim, we saw with that nice win over Ezra. Uh, Alice drew against Pedro. Uh, we saw Jennifer Yu taking out Julian Perleko. And Aaron Grinsky won his game against uh, tourney leader Matias Merrick. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you all very much for joining us here today. Thank you to all the players who uh, both are just playing and especially the ones who joined us here on the broadcast. Always interesting to hear their thoughts about their games uh, after, after they finish. Uh, be sure to join in tomorrow at 2 p.m. for our coverage over the final round of the Norm Congress. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as always, my name is Caleb Denby. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.